the future is Cybertruck. No, no, not that one. Next. No, 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 keep going, keep going. Oh, Jesus Christ. Next, next, no, no, stop, stop, stop. That's it, that one. Just look at it. Bonkers. The Cybertruck is a revolutionary product that most people still don't know about or understand. Once deliveries begin and more people see it and realise that it can outperform any other truck in every way that matters and that it's the ultimate utilitarian workhorse, this unapologetic metal doorstop will finally usher in the exciting cyber future that some of us have been longing for for decades. Cybertrucks will change the look of our roads forever. It's 2023, and finally the year that this beast goes into production. I want to highlight the exciting things that we know so far, from why the hell it looks like a block of cheese, to the cult-like following the Cybertruck has whipped up, and make a few predictions and speculations of what surprises might be coming on the production model from my years of obsessing over Tesla. Let's start at the prototype reveal, roughly two weeks ago, back in 2019. I remember watching this live, thinking it must be a joke. What the hell is that? My brain could not cope with my expectations of what I thought the Cybertruck was going to look like. In my mind, trucks were not triangles, however, there was a triangle on stage. And my basic brain could not fit that triangle into a truck-shaped hole. I genuinely think I was in shock, utter confusion for five minutes. But by the end of the presentation, my mind was blown. I've never wanted a truck before, I've had no good reason to buy one, but since its reveal, I've been trying damn hard to justify why I need one to my family, and I think I've just about come up with a decent enough argument to buy one. More on that later. So what is it? It's the perfect zombie apocalypse vehicle is what it is, and a totally necessary one of course. It's an actual tough truck, one that you can smack with a sledgehammer, or throw Elon's gigantic balls at the window with just minimal damage. It not only makes every other truck look boring, but like they fell out of a Christmas cracker. The Cybertruck will be the toughest, most capable, highest performing, fun-filled truck with all the usual Tesla brand benefits. Abundant supercharger network, industry leading software, technology, efficiency, safety, on and on this list grows and continues to accelerate its lead away from the competition. What we know then, the price, well so it said, is going to be somewhere between $40,000 and $70,000. I imagine inflation might take effect here and it'll be a bit more. There's going to be a range of motors, from a single motor to a quad motor. Variants will give somewhere between 250 and 500 plus miles of range. The slowest will be 0 to 60 in 6.5 seconds, the quickest in 2.9 seconds. It will have full self-driving hardware version 4 for autonomous driving. It will have charging speeds of 1 megawatt, which is 1000 kilowatts. It's the same as the Tesla Semi. This will be insanely quick to recharge. Vehicle to load, so you can power anything, including your house. It'll have 110 and 220 volt power outlets, so no generators required for work tools, etc. It'll seat six, three at the front and three at the back. It'll have four wheeled steering and torque vectoring. It has a secure retractable bed cover and slide out ramp to allow for easy access, thanks to air suspension that can lower the rear end. It'll have armoured bulletproof glass. You'll have a choice of boring old steering wheel or the exciting yoke steering rectangle. And for those that have already ordered a Cybertruck, you can say... Oh my god, and I just bought a boat! Because it will be! Musk actually tweeted that the Cybertruck will be waterproof enough to serve briefly as a boat. He added that it will even be able to cross rivers, lakes and seas that aren't too choppy. The parts about briefly and not too choppy should be a little concerning. The best part is no part. Tesla is better at deleting parts of vehicles than Twitter was at deleting files before Elon took over. Deleting unnecessary parts, simplifying the design of components and constantly working towards Elon's mantra of the best part is no part is fundamental to the Cybertruck's design. Although you can't apply the best part is no part to all things, can you? It doesn't work for like actors, it doesn't work for Lego, uh, desserts I suppose. Anyway, so deleting parts is what's driving down the manufacturing costs of all Tesla vehicles. Who needs a traditional frame of a car when you can build an exoskeleton? which means outside skeleton. It's what insects have on the outside to protect their squishy bits on the inside. With regards to Cybertruck, you are the squishy bit inside, because the exoskeleton frame around it is made from 3mm steel, laser scored and folded from a single sheet. This is a revolution in vehicle design and manufacturing. You would assume that this would be way heavier than a traditional aluminium made body, but because it's so sturdy, a traditional frame is not needed, which reduces overall weight. Genius! Or at least that was the plan at the time, 
there's been a lot of speculation about how the Cybertruck will be made. The single piece exoskeleton thing might not be 100% accurate. It's looking likely that a huge single casting and a more traditional roof structure with folded steel around that might indeed be the way to build the Cybertruck, until perhaps they've mastered that. We won't know exactly how it's made until Sandy Munro gets his hands on it and starts tearing it down piece by piece to see exactly how it's put together. What we do know though is that it'll be made of ultra hard 30 times cold rolled stainless steel and have bulletproof armoured glass and be dent, damage and long term corrosion proof. Some of the world's best material engineers work for SpaceX. That's quite handy because the stainless steel that will be used to make Cybertrucks is the same material that makes Starships. Oi oi, is that SpaceX? Yes, uh, Tesla down the road. Would you rather believe it? We've only gone and run out of this stainless steel for these new fandangled cyber watsits. Yeah, you, you couldn't sling a load in some semis and have them be on the merry way, could you? Oh, that's great, that is great. How much do we need, Governor? Oh, about 100 million tonnes. Uh, hello? Oh, yeah, great. Oh, lovely. See you in half hour. Cheerio. Have a banana. Oh, that's great, that is. It made my day. The 9,000 ton Gigapress will produce a single piece rear underbody casting for the Cybertruck. Just like the way other Teslas are built, these enormous machines have eliminated the need of hundreds of factory floor robots. The 9,000 ton bit refers to the clamping pressure as molten aluminium gets injected into a die, which is a hollowed out mould, and in just one second the casting is made. It takes just 45 seconds to complete the whole process. The very design of the Cybertruck has come from the ground up from first principles thinking of what a truck needs to be and how it can be produced cheaply and at scale. With no body panels to stamp, no stamping machines needed and no paint shop, which removes the expensive, time-consuming, large footprint of the manufacturing process, the Cybertruck is a prime example of what removing complexity from a vehicle does. No more watching paint dry. Once the factory is ramped to scale, Cybertrucks will be rolling off the production lines at impressive speeds, at possibly record-breaking times. This will give the Cybertruck very healthy profit margins, given the cost savings to produce it, which will ultimately lead to lower consumer costs. The cheaper a vehicle is to make, the cheaper it can be sold. Everyone's happy. But for some people, MY EYES! WHY DOES IT LOOK LIKE THAT? Firstly, triangles are the strongest shape there is. Don't mess with the triangle. They represent geometric sturdiness. Secondly, folded steel has edges. It had to look like that. The design of Cybertruck prioritised functionality over aesthetics. The stainless steel sheets cannot be bent with smooth curves, and Tesla's goal was to create a pickup truck with a solid body which was utilitarian in nature. For this reason, the car turned out so angular. Rather than design the Cybertruck's looks first, looks were the result of its core engineering genius design. Its shape also gives very low aerodynamic drag for a vehicle of this size. Although I have no idea why it's driving through a sea of cucumbers here. Elon has said, quote, With extreme effort, Cybertruck might hit a 0.30 drag coefficient, which would be insane for a truck. The Model S, for example, comes in at 0.20. Total addressable market. Make no mistake, it will sell millions. The US truck market is huge. Over 2 million pickup truck sales a year. How much market share could the Cybertruck eat into? Well, with something like 2 million pre-orders, it's going to take years of production just to work through those, let alone when people start to see it on work sites and realise it makes other trucks seem like toys in comparison. Then there's people who have never considered buying a truck, but want this because it looks insane. I've heard so many people say they'd love a Cybertruck here in jolly old England, the land of the quaint. There's certainly a lot of people who think it looks disgusting, but when it ticks so many boxes, it'll be hard to justify buying anything else if you value performance, capabilities, ruggedness and safety. There was actually too many pre-orders of the Cybertruck, so Tesla stopped taking them in many places around the world. I'm guessing probably late 2025 before we see the first ones on the road here. Mockery. They say no publicity is bad publicity. And the rather shocking moment of smashing the window live on stage was both terrifically awkward and hilarious. Tesla totally owned that though, by not only saying they'll fix that in pre-production, but providing smashed window stickers to their remote controlled versions of the Cybertruck. Just another little example of how Tesla pushes everything to its limits. Pushes everything to its limits. Limits? Stop saying limits! Just another example of how Tesla pushes everything to the limits and makes no apologies for making mistakes and learning from the process. Something which most people are so afraid to do is make mistakes, but you learn to walk from falling over. If you never make mistakes in life, you are not trying hard enough. Embrace failure as part of life's process. 
Take this YouTube channel, for example. I have no idea if this is gonna work on a business or financial level someday. I'm working on the assumption it might not, but I've not let the fear of that get in the way of giving it a go, because to me, it seems too important to ignore. I will never look back and say, I wish I'd given that a go. This is exactly what I wanna do every day, and I'm loving it. Back to smashing the window, though. Here's Franz before the event, throwing the same steel balls with no issue at all. It turns out whacking the door with a sledgehammer may have lowered the integrity of the glass, therefore allowing it to break on stage. Oh, now they know. Memes and cameos. Here's Lego then, mocking Tesla, with a guaranteed shatterproof brick model of Cybertruck. I love it. Then there's the charming Jack Boys Gang Gang music video. What? That can't be right. I thought they were a bit more rappy than that. Sorry, gang gang. Featuring not only the Cybertruck, but the ATV as well, and even a not a flamethrower provided by Elon Musk's boring company a few years back. The Cybertruck looks right at home here. Then there's this, Elon H4. But I think we can all agree, Citroen nailed the Cybertruck design back in the year that I was born. Speculations then. Laser wipers? Tesla patented this back in 2019. Which might happen. It's got something to do with laser beams shooting the droplets of water and debris off the screen. I did look into it, but I got so confused, I didn't want to delve into technical jargon that I just don't understand. But yes, there may be laser wipers. For now though, that gigantic window wiper we've seen on this pre-production model has kind of grown on me, to be honest. A kind of soldier's rifle being held and ready for action. It certainly looks the post-apocalyptic part, doesn't it? It's hard to say. Knowing you Americans, you'll probably double it as a gun somehow. Maybe you could just take it off and pop to the shops. For your own safety, of course, you know, let's not assume that you're the crazy person with a gun. I digress. You are a bit shooty, aren't you? Then there's these mirrors. The fat ones are okay, I guess, but these sad eyebrow-shaped ones offer nothing for the tough look, do they? I would have thought something like these camera variants would at least be an option. A steer-by wire would eliminate the physical connection between the steering wheel and the wheels by using electrically controlled motors to change the direction of the wheels and to provide feedback to the driver. This would eliminate parts, so Tesla likes that idea already, and could possibly make it to production on the Cybertruck. We shall see. I think the wheels look amazing just the way they are on the prototype, so I really hope they make it to production. However, airless tyres might change the aesthetics of those. We know Goodyear have been working on these for years, but have previously said 2030 will be the year they finally become available. I wonder why it's taken so long to make these virtually everlasting tyres available to the public. You will continue to have good years, won't you? So long as you don't let on that puncture-proof everlasting tyres already exist. Damn you, planned obsolescence! A Model 3 has even been tested wearing these rather odd-looking tyres, something that I think would look incredible on the Cybertruck. Why is it taking so long? A question this channel often has to bring up. Well, Giga Texas needed to be built first. That's done. The ramping up of the Model Y needed to happen first. And then there was a pandemic, a war, global shortages and material cost hikes, battery supply constraints... There's always genuine things that get in the way of progress, but some people still think it'll never be built. Well, Tesla's tooling up the factory right now and has taken delivery of the Gigapress, which is the star component for building the Cybertruck. Whilst ramping up production takes time, it does look like we will see Cybertrucks crawling off the production line this year, with the likelihood of scaling up to mass production next year. Really though, people have no idea what it takes to ramp up production. I mean, me neither. No clue. But just consider the materials needed, the machinery, every component within the car. For those whinging at these delays, have a go yourself at building a working prototype and then try and make millions of them. I mean, how hard can it be? Accessories. Changing the colour. Although technically you could heat up steel, which would change the colour of it, it might be easier to wrap it in any colour or pattern you can think of. It should be relatively simple given the lack of curves. Over at the Cybertruck Owners Club, you can play around with the Cybertruck and test out some different looks to your heart's content. It's also a great place to delve into the forums and geek out on everything Cybertrucky. Over on the Cybertruck website page, there's a few cool looking renders of accessories, from camping gear to full on cyber trailer to, you know, carry your Tesla bots in. Who knows? But the aftermarket accessories are looking awesome. The Cyberlander. When I saw this, alarm bells were ringing. Pop a Starlink terminal on top of your Cybertruck and you've got a fully mobile home, studio, office with internet, heating, air conditioning, a shower, toilet, sink, cooker, power for anything and solar panels could potentially have you off-grid for weeks. I think this is incredible 
and yours for just under $50,000, not bad for a tiny house. Or how about the Space Camper at $24,000? This wedge sits on the frame of the bed and includes a double bed, flexible interior, a cinema and easy removal for storage in your garage. I love all of these innovative designs and possibilities. I'll link in the description below to their website so you can check them out. For no particular reason here, could you give this video a like? Thanks. It was easy, wasn't it? You feel all fuzzy and warm for being kind, and it gives my channel a little boost. Here's something nice for doing that. You're welcome. Competition. Ford have done surprisingly well to release the fully electric F-150 Lightning in plenty of time before the Cybertruck starts eating their market share. It certainly seems capable enough and is doing rather well. Just don't plan on driving it more than 200 miles in the cold, even in the 320 mile long range one. The electric Hummer, which I thought was another joke given its colossal size, zero efforts in efficiency or aerodynamics, and a 212 kilowatt hour battery pack, that's nearly four times the size of my Model 3's battery. It's hard to understand why anyone looking to go electric would even consider buying this. If you are one of the 72 people in the world that bought one of these in Q4 2022, please do let me know. Why? Then there's Rivian. I think this is a cool little pickup truck, some great features and functionality, and despite struggling to ramp up production and lots of teething issues, to be expected I guess for a new car company, hopefully Rivian will survive and thrive going forward. It's just not going to match the Cybertruck in terms of spec, capabilities or toughness. But really, nothing will. There's also the Chevy Silverado, which I know literally nothing about, and quite honestly, I'm so bored at looking at these generic lumps of ugliness. They all look the same and quite frankly duller than a dishwasher. Can we move on? A British take on the Cybertruck. Unless you're a builder here in the UK, trucks are seen as a rather flaccid status symbol. Like Chelsea tractors. Totally unnecessary, enormous, massively polluting lumps of look at me. The only off-roading they do here is during the school run when they might mount a curb. Obviously size is a consideration for our little country roads and tiny car parking spaces, but you know, lorries, vans and caravans all get around, so I suppose Cybertrucks will function here too. I just still can't quite imagine one rolling through the middle of my town. People have said that it looks like CGI in real life and I, I just can't imagine it. I can't wait to see it. Why on earth does little old me need one then? Well, I don't need it, obviously. This may seem rather elaborate, but before starting this YouTube channel, I tried desperately hard to find a reason why I might buy one someday. Could I go into the building trade? That would justify it. Definitely not, I'm far too lazy nowadays. How about farming? No, I don't like early starts and I'm still too lazy. How about starting a YouTube channel, growing it to the point I could justify buying a Cybertruck and Cyberlander so I can go off exploring, filming and content creation on the go? Yes, got it. And between me and you, it's kind of working. I've got a place that I'm not annoying my family and friends talking about Tesla. I'm turning it into a little business thing and I might one day get this Cyberlander. Awesome. Once I hit a thousand followers, I can monetize this bad boy and bring in one, maybe two pounds a month. Thanks, YouTube. Let's hear it then. What do you think? Do you want one? Have you ordered one? Do you hate it? What about those mirrors or the wiper rifle? <laughs> do you fancy a Cyberlander and roughing it out in the woods somewhere? I'd love to know what you think in the comments. I do read them all and respond to the nice ones, but if you talk gibberish, I don't know what you mean, so I can't respond. Oh look, more me. You can click on either of these if you like. I'm Will, this is the Tesla Jigsaw, and I thank you all very much for watching. Bye for now.